welcome back to Trucking with Bellox 18. I'm here in Quincy, Florida, and we are starting a new video. You see that little sliver of light back there? That little just crack of light on the horizon. That's called the butt crack of dawn. And that's what time we're waking up this morning because we got to get deadhead up to Atlanta to pick up our load. But before we do that, I got to tell you guys, this video is once again sponsored by DriveWise. It's the app you can download on your phone. It's going to allow you to bypass way stations all across America, thousands of way stations all across America. Uh, it's going to save you time, save you money. It's a big deal, man. I've been, I've been using it for over a year and a half. It's my favorite $18 I spend every single month. Uh, it gets me to bypass these weight scales, not wait in line saves me honestly it's the time for me the money i'm like eh, i'm gonna burn fuel with this stupid you know square nose truck that's just the way it is but the time i waste when i have to pull into those scales is just is ridiculous is ridiculous you pull in they put you behind a whole line of cars and you have to sit there i mean a whole line of trucks and you're just sitting there and you're sitting there and you're sitting there and uh, then they stop the guy on the scale and they tell him something on the microphone and that guy can't understand him and then they, he's just sitting there and then they're like, yeah, you need to pull around. And he's like, what? And they're like, come on, you need to pull around. What? Yeah, and the whole time you're sitting out with your trailer like out almost in traffic on the fog line. So I like getting that green light on the DriveWise uh, app. It tells me just so I can bypass the scale. I don't even gotta stop. On with my life, on to the next load. So uh, anyway, um, you guys can download it right there in the description. There's a, there's a link in the description. You click on it, you get 30 days free, uh, and then you can decide if you like it and uh, if you want to keep on going. Like I said, $18 a month. So uh, with that, I just keep looking at like the, just that little sliver of light back there, man. That butt crack of dawn, it's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. But uh, we gotta get rolling. So uh, I think it's time to roll the music. Let's go. Just 
thick and uh, buggy. But uh, yeah, we're uh, it's keeping me alert. That's for sure. No relaxing on this drive. I keep my eyes peeled straight ahead. Make make sure I'm not coming up on anything. I gotta watch my my speed go under the speed limit just in case. Uh, you know, some of those thicker patches, it's like, I take my foot off the gas and kind of just see what's going on. Make sure I can see what's in front of me, especially on new roads, but it's almost more dangerous on familiar roads because that's when you might uh, think, well, I know this road and you know all the curves and then there might be a car in front of you that doesn't know all the road and all the curves and they're going 10 miles an hour. It can get ugly. I've seen it. But uh, anyway, we, uh, we we broke out of Florida pretty quickly. I think I only did like 20, 25 miles in Florida altogether. Uh, so we didn't go very far into Florida. But uh, I can check that one off the list now. That was my first time ever going to Florida. And uh, even though it was only 25 miles, it counts, all right? It counts. And even though it was only the panhandle of Florida, it still counts. So uh, I've checked 32 uh, states out of the lower 48, 32, and I've gone to Canada once. Uh, I don't know what territory in Canada, whichever one is over there, uh, you know, across Puget Sound from uh, Washington, uh, whatever that one is. I don't even want to, I don't even want to say it because I, I don't want to be dumb and not know it because I really don't know it. I just know the names of a couple, and I know it's not like, you know, Manitoba or Saskatchewan or any of those, but I'm like, is it is it British Columbia? I don't even see, I shouldn't have even said it. I'm going to have to edit that out if I'm wrong. I don't want to sound like a total idiot with geography. Anyway, um, 32 of the 48 lower states, uh, never been to Alaska or Hawaii either, so, but I, I don't plan on trucking to those states. Um... I'm, I'm missing a few in the middle that seem weird. Kansas, South Dakota, and Colorado. Uh, so those are the only ones that I haven't been to that uh, that kind of seem like they're out of place. Although Wisconsin also. Wisconsin and Michigan, I haven't been to Wisconsin or Michigan. Um, so those are kind of out of place. But then all the rest that I haven't been to are all the little ones up in the Northeast. So New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, Rhode Island. Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, etc., uh, etc. Et I don't know if I named all of them, but uh, yeah, that's uh, those are the only states I haven't been to. So at some point, I'll have to take a tr trip up into the north northeast just so I can cross some states off my list. One of my friends said it's really annoying when truckers brag about, yeah, I've gone, I'm, I'm trucking all 40, all 48. 48 I've chucked all 48 and uh, I told him well, I'm, I'm counting up he's like just don't don't do that when you meet someone when you meet someone don't introduce yourself and say, yeah I've been, I, I've been a trucker for a long time I've trucked all 48 states I said dude as soon as I hit that that milestone that 48 state milestone I'm gonna get t-shirts made I'm gonna get a tattoo on my arm I'm a 48 stater boom in 48 states, trucking to 48 states. I'm a 48 state trucker. Anyway, uh, I probably won't do that, but I do like keeping track. I like keeping track. Uh, there's an app that helps me keep track, and I found this other part of the app where it actually you can keep track of which counties you've been to in America. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. That's crazy. Which counties? That's nuts. I, I that's a whole nother level. I can't I can't do that one. I can't do it. States are hard enough. I'm not gonna bust into counties. But anyway, all right. Well, we're gonna keep on getting through this fog. Uh, we'll be to Columbus, Georgia, probably in uh, about I don't know. I don't know. We're 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 supposed to get up to Smyrna, Georgia, which is just outside of Atlanta by uh, 10 30 so that's what my my uh, gps is telling me so that's about three hours away give or take so we'll uh i feel like
like Columbus, Georgia, I think it's closer to me than it is. I was going to say it might be like a half hour away, but it might be closer to like an hour away. Because we're three hours away from Atlanta. Columbus, Georgia is not that far from Atlanta. So. Anyway, all right. We'll uh, keep on trucking down the road. I'll catch up with you guys later. We're in this um, industrial park here that uh, doesn't feel very truck friendly but has warehouses everywhere. Uh, I'm pretty sure I trimmed a couple trees back there. Uh, shoot. There's a Yeah, there's a truck back here that's gonna make it hard for me to make this turn I don't know and, and then I don't know where I'm gonna be able to turn around I feel like I feel like there's got to be a better way to come in here or a better way to get in here better way to do something I don't know we'll see uh, maybe it's not too bad all right all right Goodness, this is gonna be silly. We're gonna be like trying to trying to back into some some silliness right here. So we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, I made it. It's uh, I'm, I'm a little early for my appointment. It's 10:20, so that's a good thing. And uh, we'll get loaded up and get the heck out of Atlanta before the real traffic starts. All right, see how long this takes. All right, getting this thing turned around is a little more difficult than I had hoped, but we got it now. Uh, we're gonna get loaded in this, this same door that this white truck is in in front of me. We're actually going to the same place, we're doing the same load. So, we're both loading here and going, uh, going up to um, Laverne, Tennessee, so that is, that is the, the uh, plan as of now is to, is to uh, get, wait for this guy to get loaded and then, um, and then uh, we'll just follow him up get loaded right behind him and uh, end up end up going um, you know, going right behind him up to Tennessee so my appointment's at 7.30 tonight but I was just going to show up early and see what happens so we shall see but for now we'll just see how long this takes alright they got me in the dock like I don't know 30 minutes later they're pretty quick loading over here. I think they're almost done loading me already by now. So, uh, it's, uh, it's all good stuff over here, man. All good stuff. We'll take this load and get it up to Laverne as soon as uh, we get out of here. All right, we got loaded up. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not even noon yet. Yeah, so I'm gonna get out of here and we're gonna start heading heading north towards Chattanooga and try and get through as much as we can. And then once I get through Chattanooga, then I'll probably stop somewhere and get something to eat. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But for now, I gotta figure out my way out of here because this is a little bit of a maze getting in and out of this place. And uh, I gotta take a picture with BOL for the broker. So I'll do that. I'll catch up with you guys later. All right, we're finally moving in Chattanooga. I, uh, I was on the phone, so I didn't record anything, but we had quite a bit of traffic going through Chattanooga. 
I believe you guys now when you say there's uh, there's pretty bad traffic down there because I kind of figured it'd be like Nashville. It's not that bad. And still it wasn't like terrible, terrible, like, you know, Bay Area rush hour, but I also was going through at, you know, two o'clock. So it was a decent, it was a decent amount of traffic. I, uh, I won't, I won't underestimate it again. I'll, uh, I ended up stopping and getting something to eat, you know, before I got through Chattanooga. So it probably got that much worse for me. Just the later it gets, I'm sure it gets worse and worse. So maybe next time I will push all the way through, even though, uh, I was hungry and thirsty. Maybe I'll just, uh, next time I'll just get through Chattanooga and try and eliminate some of that wait time, man. Just pretty much lost about a half hour in traffic just now to go about five, six miles. So it, uh, it's less than ideal. Less than ideal. But, uh, anyway, we're going to keep on headed north. I'm rolling behind this skateboard. Looks like a cool flat top peak. Side next to it, see how cool it is. But, and we won't mess with it. Alright, I'll catch up with you guys down the road. Alright, we made it over here to uh, United States Cold Storage Inc. in Laverne, Tennessee. So I'm going to go see if I can check in. Uh, looks like they're kind of busy inside there, but. I'll go over here. It looks like the guard shack might be over there. I'll go walk over there and just see. I saw all these trucks parked out here on the street, so I figured oh, I'm going to grab a spot on the street while I still can because my appointment isn't for another, uh, let's see, three and a half hours. So we'll see if they let me check in early. If not, we'll be waiting three and a half hours. All right. Make our way back over to El Hueso Queso. And uh, well, um, they said they'll cook, give me a call when they got a door. So it wasn't an outright rejection, so that's good. So we'll see how long it takes. It might take all night, but then again, it might not. There's no, uh, I guess, no news is good news, right? But uh, yeah, we'll just get over here hang out in the truck it's warm today it's another warm one so we'll uh have to figure something out but uh yeah i think uh i think it might take a while you know what we'll break down the numbers inside let's do that all right well no numbers yet but we did get assigned a door and while we were waiting uh, it's now almost six o'clock, so we waited almost, uh, I don't know, how long is that? 3.30 to six o'clock, so about two and a half hours. And uh, while we uh, waited, there was a pretty substantial downpour. It was, it was kind of fun. Kind of fun. So now we're going to come in here and uh, look for Dock 22. Looks like it'll be to our right over here. And then uh, we'll get lined up with it, but leave our doors closed because we got a freezer load. So that is the plan, Stan. Like these guys are backing in at the same time as me, so I don't know why they always do that. They call people that are going to be in doors that are next to each other to come and back into their doors at the same time. It's really, it's really a bad practice. 
I don't know why so many places do it. It's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible way to to organize your yard. It ends up costing your yard goat time too, because now, like now, I'm blocking everything up. Because I was trying to get lined up for dock 22, and this guy's trying to get into dock. It's like 20 maybe or 21. I can't tell. This other guy's gonna. He's gonna flip around and try and take a take a door too. A silver truck. I don't know if you can see him, but just doesn't make a lot of sense. This is a cluster. The guy behind me was trying to get out, and now I'm I'm pushing this guy over. He needs to straighten out more. <clears throat> oh well. If I ever get in the dock, I'll uh, update you guys. <laughs> All right, let's break down the numbers and wrap this video up. I'm still waiting over here. It's 8.30 at night, and uh, and I know my I had an appointment at 7 o'clock, but they put me in a door at, um, I don't know, whatever time that was. What was it, 6? Six, 6 o'clock? And um, they, haven't, they haven't come and unloaded me yet or even had me open my doors yet or anything. So they must be really behind because there's a lot of guys that, have been here longer than I have in a dock that haven't even opened their doors yet so we'll see what happens but anyway we'll break down the numbers right now and then I'll wrap this video up um, we're leaving for Mississippi tomorrow so this load still was a good load for me to get home in time to uh, head out to Mississippi to Oxford Mississippi and help my oldest son um, you know be there for uh, for orientation so he doesn't start school until August but he had to pick a uh, an, an orientation time they, they spread out orientation over the whole um, over the whole summer because they want to do it more one-on-one -on -one with the freshmen uh, to kind of make sure they get everything um, not one-on-one -on -one, but you know smaller groups so they can make sure that they get the help they need to get the right classes and all that stuff so anyway um, so we basically we got eighteen hundred dollars on the load from uh, Manchester Tennessee down to Quincy Florida so not bad at all it was like 430 loaded miles or something like that so that was like 430 something a mile um, so really good rate on that I did have to deadhead down to Manchester to get it um, and then from Quincy Florida we deadheaded up to Smyrna Georgia which is just outside Atlanta so it's like 200 and something miles of uh, deadhead uh, and that load uh, was a $1,400 load coming back uh, up here to Laverne um, and then from here we got a deadhead another 35 miles to get back to back home but uh, so that was like that was like six dollars a loaded mile if you look if you're just looking at the loaded miles so like what the what the broker looks at is loaded miles they only ever look at loaded miles uh, but when you take into consideration all of my miles deadheading down to Manchester uh, the deadheading from Quincy up to Smyrna and then the deadheading from here back to uh, my yard all those miles will be about 1,000 15 miles uh, approximately okay so for two days two and a half days of work um, we're doing uh, 3200 and uh, 1015 so it comes up to like 315 a mile um, right around there so not bad and uh, you know I was kind of kind of stuck trying to find something that that loaded on Saturday or uh, or on Sunday rather um, and so I, I feel pretty good that I I got the load on Sunday and I made it down there and I made it back in time I made decent money I didn't lose money so that's good um, and so that was kind of the the goal is just find something that I could put on the truck on Sunday I could work through 4th of July because nothing was moving on 4th of July and then uh, and then I could find something on Tuesday to bring me right back home and just do a out and back and it worked out 
Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. And I know it's not like uh, the best, the, the best, uh, um, you know, two and a half days of work I've ever done, but uh, considering the circumstances, I think it worked out. And uh, well, now I'm gonna go and um, once I get unloaded here, go home and sleep in my own bed and then go uh, off to Oxford for a couple days. So uh, yeah, kind of a good deal. And then I think I'm gonna end up doing the same thing again next week, trying to work through the weekend. I'm trying to look at the loads right now. It, they're kind of they're kind of weak sauce right now, but it is still early in the week. I think a little later in the week we might see some stuff get pushed to the weekend. Um, some stuff might pop up a little later, but uh, uh, because next week uh, we'll be leaving for my dad's memorial on Thursday, um, so I think I'm gonna try and start when we get back from Oxford on Saturday. Try and just hop right back into the truck and uh, put in some work because. You know the bills got to get paid the trucks got to got to stay moving and um you know this the the uh yeah this this timing of of the rates kind of dropping low and the and the fuel kind of getting expensive um is bad timing to try and take a bunch of time off you know like the i need to run miles to keep the the, the business profitable so uh that just means i'm gonna have to make some sacrifices to get those miles done work through the weekends and find some loads it's a little bit harder to string together loads over the weekends but gotta do what you gotta do so all right this is a long outro this is a long farewell but uh we'll just cut it off quickly love you guys peace out see you on the next load i did eventually make it home last night and uh i just figured you guys would enjoy this little Johnny Bravo, Jimmy Neutron, the uh, hair I got going when I woke up this morning. Yeah. That's what happens when you take a shower and then go to bed. Forms this perfect little teardrop. Jesse Bear, you say hi to everybody on YouTube? Hi. He's already all hooked in out here. Shirtless, shirt, shoeless. He's loving it. Alright. See you guys.